start okay, recording good. this for quality control purposes. Oh, and just just to check, um, I should have double checked. I sent a, a buddy of mine the link. So is it yeah. okay if he joins in as well? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, he's a Linux guru. He's he's some fascinating. Y'all have some great scientific stuff to talk about, but he's uh, he teaches me all, all my Linux stuff. stuff. Um, yeah, so his, his name's Adam. So okay, hopefully he'll be joining us. Uh, and as far as your headphones, uh, let's see. Can you see me? I've got these, and these are three D printed headphones that we. Made. Oh wow. wow! So actually, that's the same thing, right? Nice. So, like, how how much of that is three D printed? The whole head head um, thing, or what? So this whole thing is three D printed. The only thing that's not three D printed is is the the foam foam part. Hmm. The, okay. the soft part, but I think we could probably even make, get that 3D printed, like with rubber, with uh, thermal plastic. Oh yeah, the what's the Ninja Flex stuff? Yeah, that kind of stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, these are like thirty dollars. They're like a DJ kind of a, you know, they they, they fold up and then they twist out. So they have all these different modular modulations. Uh huh. So like a a, D, a DJ could hear, you know, he could hear the house music or whatever, and flip it over. But these are like the lowest end you could possibly get. Okay. Um. But they're they're really good quality. They're, the other ones are real cheap. Um, well, I'll say cheap. They're about the same price. These are like a Logitech. You know, it's got the headset. I liked it because it had the um, the inline mute on it, um, and then it had oh, the yeah. microphone and um, headset there. But because this is all weird plastic, it like when you talk or just move your jaw and stuff, you'd hear this weird creaky sound. I don't know if those three D printed ones have that issue, but these are just so weird. Uh, Crinky, you, you always hear this little buzz, clink, crink. Okay, um, that drove me crazy. Okay, but anyway, um, yeah. So Adam, who's coming on? He, we're both on the board uh, at Timbit Works Maker Space, so here in San Antonio. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's um, I've been involved with Timbit uh, Maker Space. It was actually one zero, so it was actually two bit Maker Space, but everybody called it Timbit. Didn't realize the binary kind of mm -hmm. play on words there, and so. Anyway, okay. it's Timbit works, um, but yeah, we're you know five one c three nonprofit uh, warehouse in here in San Antonio. It's freaking hot in the summer. It's way hot because of the shutdown. We did do a um, uh, limited hours. We did members would get twenty four seven access to the building, and that was wonderful. But unfortunately, with the shutdown, we, we, everybody's kind of throttled back, and we're having to follow guidelines and masks and all this kind of stuff. So it's not as fun of a makerspace right now with limited. Uh, interactions that we used to have um so anyway, that's that's my our our, our makerspace uh, we just got a, a cnc plasma um it was originally a cnc plasma but um right now it's retrofitted with when we got it it's set up as a uh, you know router table so it's got a router mm. wood bit on it um, and so that's what it's currently being used as down the roads there's plans to switch it back to a plasma type table but we do have the welding we do have woodworking 3d printing um electronics ceramics a um, little bit of everything. Oh, here comes Adam. Um, Brian Beck and Adam Bark. Bark and Beck. Beck and Bark. <laughs> okay. This is my first time testing this with Google uh, Meet. Google Meet. So. Do you go by Google. Beck or Brian or? I go by Beck. There are way too many Brian's where I used to work. Okay. And, uh, Beck. So, so yeah. I'm for Beck. a full time, what do you do? You do, you do teaching at a school? So yeah, you would ask that. I didn't reply. Um, it, for the past 20 years, I was in higher education, so I was like eight plus years, almost 10 years um, at a technical college, Texas State Technical College, hmm. and I did um, instructing digital image and design, so computer graphics, all the fun stuff on computer, and, um, and then I moved into Angel State University where I was doing faculty development, so um, online teaching, um, any th type of technology stuff that was related to um, course delivery, online delivery. Um, mm -hmm. And then now I'm at Bear County, which is the city of San Antonio's Bear County County, um, doing technical training. So that's what I'm currently doing. Okay. Um, but yeah, and Adam, I don't know if you want to give any kind of introduction or not. I mean, I, I just invited him on, so I'll not, not, not put you on the spot. But you did have some work in uh, what in the UK? You're working over there. What was the uh, spinny collidey thing you're working on? <laughs> yeah, uh, worked at a synchrotron light source. If that means anything to you. Mm -hmm. that, are you in the UK right now, Adam? No. no he's back in San Antonio. Yeah. Okay. But he's, you're, he's, yeah. you're English? Yep. Originally? Okay. Cool. 
What do you do for a living right now? Media worker? Uh, <laughs> sponge off my wife. <laughs> she got, uh, yeah. came over here because um, she got a job at Southwest Research Institute. Um, she so she does a planetary a few months planetary now. stuff, yeah. Yeah. I'm How stellar. Looking for work now, but. <laughs> I, did, I, I did use them for a bit, but yeah, okay. Anyway. <laughs> You were doing fusion, right? Was it your yeah. background's in fusion, or? Yeah, that's pretty stellar, as in uh, trying to tame that energy for Earth. But since then, move moved to more renewable energy, like solar energy and hydrogen. Man, hydrogen cars more th for everybody. More things you can uh, you can't hold a star in your hands, right? I guess you yeah, can't yeah. hold the sun. Yeah. There's a little issue we've got there, but I don't know if people are going to resolve it. The heat is still going. <laughs> what is still well, gone? Simon has gone quite far out of budget, but they're still funding it. Which one, Eater? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh man, Eater is still alive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you was, you, you two guys point. are really smart. <laughs> International thermonuclear fusion reactor. Yep. Oh, okay. That's gotcha. Uh, used to be big when I was around, and. Uh, Okay, great, great. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, let's talk about some down to earth so, things here. Okay, so, so let's, so, let's go ahead. start with you. You, so, you drive, you drive, okay. ask questions. You saw my video, so yeah, yeah. I, this was just me brain dumping my dis. So, and whatever you want to see and talk about, we can. Was Adam involved in Adam? Were you involved in that in any way? It's, he's always my beta tester as far as helping me get uh, some of the stuff. The, the other plugin we had to do for Linux was a kind of a kernel uh, with Mod Pod, the, the, the mods you got to turn on. Um, and he helped me with get through all that kind of stuff, Linux side of stuff that I don't know how to do. Um, I do a lot of the graphical stuff, of course, and then he helped me with this, getting this going. Um, but he's my guinea pig to help do these kind of streaming so I can test all this stuff out. And uh, we're working on some something like this with... Um, Timbit works makerspace to where we can do virtual training sessions of virtual host, you know, really up our game with the way we deliver content and oh, yeah. this this kind of stuff. So which has a lot of, which has a long way to go in terms of making that super easy and practical because right now I don't see a lot of good quality stuff out. There's some stuff, but I mean the kind of stuff you're doing there, it's like wow, that's that's like cutting edge stuff. But a lot of people just don't, I, don't I try have to the take tool sets and skill sets, right? That's yeah, it's so, you know, my, my journey with open source is working in higher education. I came in, I started working for the Center for Innovation and Teaching and Research. And back then I was using all proprietary software. I, I land there and I, they say, okay, Center for Innovation and Teaching and Research. And this is 2008 when the economy, everything was tanking. We have no money. And they say, go be innovative. By the way, you have no money, right? There's no budget. <laughs> and so then that's what turned me on to open source software, um, or at least more so as a practical like i got to use this and then the whole philanthropist <laughs> philanthropist kind of um how do i how do i deal with taxpayers money how do i take this software and you know get, give it to my students right so i couldn't take adobe products and give it to my students or or to faculty that i was working with it was cost prohibitive and so that's what led me to try to focus and do everything i could do with open source software that way i could give it away mm -hmm. so fast forward to now um, that's where I try to take and be as resourceful as possible, use the tools I have, but yet raise the bar as much as possible. Right. So I, I try to yeah. equal Adobe. Yeah. I try to equal the, the big production companies as much as I can with zero or next to no dollars as possible. That's awesome. Um, that's so awesome that, the, yeah. It's kind of like yeah, that, open source mm -hmm, ecology, uh, be innovative, but by the way, you have no budget. Yeah. <laughs> it's like change the world, change the world. But you have zero dollars. Oh, by the way, you don't have a budget. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and I, I was faced with that. I was faced with that so much. And the more I started doing all the nonprofit work, so I started working with these nonprofits, and they kept telling me, um, or or I I would go in there and see that people did not have, because um, I was doing where we took the, we called it Texas, the Texas Open Source Project. Uh, another guy coined the name, but we were doing um, uh, Ken Stark. He was with. Uh, the Helios project, and now it's called Reglue, I think, which is recycled electronics for GNU Linux used in education. Hmm. Hmm. Reglue. Um, basically, take donated computers, install Linux on them, give them to underprivileged families or people who, who didn't have you know, the digital divide, and we were trying to bridge that gap with open source software. And so when I started doing more of that, I saw you know, the, some of the kids that came to us, they 
they were getting a, it was a used computer, but they were getting a computer, but, um, you know, they were, we would tally up, you know, what'd you like about this workshop? What'd you like about all this stuff? And they're like the free food, right? So like these kids weren't even getting food uh, on the weekends. And so it was like, you're getting a computer, you're learning about all this new technology, you know, billion dollar companies are, are leveraging the software I'm giving you. And yet they're, they were just happy to have food, you know? And so I was, that's when it really clicked for me, like, mm. Oh man, that, there, there's an audience. The digital divide meant something to me, hmm. and it wasn't like, you know, people are like, "Oh, here's new devices. Here's new devices." By the way, you got to buy our service. You got to buy our service. You gotta, it always came with these caveats, and that's one thing in higher education. When I started doing more and more open source, and I was really passionate about it, I have vendors all the time call me these, uh, they, you know, you, you know, you, your students can't learn unless you buy our product. You can't teach unless you buy our product. And I'm like, watch me, click, you know, I'm like. Open source, you know, I don't do it with open source. And so that was just more motivation for me fighting wow. the man. And I'm like, I don't, I want to try to not have to spend millions of dollars of taxpayers' money that they don't get to see. They don't get to see the benefit of it. That's why I focus on the open source stuff. So, and then, you know, that was at the corporate trying to fight those guys. But then coming down to the practical, like, um, I also work with the Adult, adult Literacy Council. Um, um, and, you know, adults who couldn't read or write. And they, give them computers let them let them learn about technology let them learn abc's one two threes as they're typing and as they're learning typing skills now they're learning more and more practical stuff so mm -hmm. i kind of covered the gambit of these nonprofits and, and how to work with these people with with um that digital divide and all i needed was a donated computer somebody if they had an old computer in the basement you know 10 years old or whatever give me that old computer give me a jump drive put linux on it and now they've got technology that they can do like this case open source ecology and i would always plug open source ecology of like all right now let's go change the world let's go now you know about some software stuff let's look at the hardware stuff let's, let's look yeah. what people are doing with these tractors and these machines around the world and that's what dro drove me to kind of look at the software humanitarian side of things and w one thing i quote or i think quote coin it but it's one thing i focus on a lot and i preach this a lot is the open source mindset so no matter what you're doing no matter what your focus is even um, what Creative Commons license and um, o open educational resources, OERs, mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. that dealt with giving away intellectual property or um, retaining the you know the rights to it, but letting people use it, um, but allowing people to learn and absorb that content and that knowledge that they can gain from that. That's what I wanted to focus on with everything that I I did, and so. Long story short, hmm. that's what got me here to start trying to play around with some more graphics and media stuff um, as next to no dollars as possible. And that's one, I've, I've been a paying supporter of uh, Blender Foundation for years now. Hmm. So I love their stuff. Um, and it affords, because I mean, what Autodesk at the time was like three grand or five grand. And uh, now it's like $300 a month. And it's like, can't afford that. Um, so I'd rather spend some money and give it to people that, can make some awesome yeah. software, but then I can turn around and give that software away, right? I can teach people who can't afford it. Okay, you can't afford to pay for the developers. Well, you can still use it. I'll pay for your fee, right? And then, so they they get to use it too. Nice. Um, wow. But just my my big story, I guess. Excellent, excellent. What a what a case. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Oh. So you've got the ethic. That's really good. So maybe tell me how you do did the, what you did in the background right now. Should yes. So let me take you through. That? I just added a new feature, and I don't have my keystroke set up, so I'm gonna have to jump back and forth here. Um, so, so there's you're that using, one. You're oh. using OBS. Right yeah, now? OBS, of course. Um, what was great is I've been with OBS, been with them uh, four plus years. I mean, I've been in their chat rooms. Uh, you know, I was. Um, they had one of the guys passed away a couple years ago, and he he was very instrumental. He helped me out a lot um, in the chat room. Um, the uh, getting to see how that's progressed with the 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 gamer community right that's where obs came from the twitch streaming the gamers wanted wow. to be able to stream their 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 feed their video feeds and so it wasn't popular on an academic here's here's a way to stream for teaching purposes no here's how you do your video games you can plug an xbox to this you can plug a playstation you want to plug in your video uh -huh. console you want to do all these crazy things flying everywhere and all this kind of stuff so that's where obs kind of spawned from that but it got so yeah. much traction um, there was another group that came out called Streamlabs OBS, and I don't think they're affiliated at all, but um, they took kind of the core of what OBS was doing and made the commercial side of the Streamlabs. They're not connected, and so I always focus on just the open source. Here's what the community is doing. Here's how, to, how, how it works. Here's how you can help make it better. Here's how you can help use it. And it just I, I just love seeing how it progressed uh, from there. I did... Um, 
I worked with faculty with OBS, so I, I, I taught them how to do supplemental instructional videos, right? So where they could still do the screen recording, they could put their stuff down at the bottom. And then I think what Camtasia, some of those commercial properties were like 200 bucks a pop for, for the license at the time. Faculty didn't have the money. They didn't have the license. They, they couldn't buy it. And then it was like one copy, one license. That's all you get. And I'm like, well, here's how you do it for zero dollars, and your students can have it too. And this was with Inkscape too. Um, I was doing some stuff with publications. Some faculty members wanted to go to publication. They were like, oh, we have to have Adobe Illustrator. I was like, what are you trying to do? Oh, got to create this graphic. Okay, let's don't use Illustrator. Let's use Inkscape. We use Inkscape. They went to publication, and now they can give the software to their students. So you know, that's a whole other side of things of how I, you know, tied all that back together. But so back to OBS. This is. Um, uh, the background's done in Blender. I'm using a green screen back here. This is a um, pretty crude setup, and unfortunately, I got to change this every time, every day, pretty much. My new work from home situation, um, and I, I modify it. So it, it's it's good enough. It's modular enough to where I can kind of spin it up. And I got every now and then light. This camera's the, uh, the Logitech. Uh, was it the C nine nine twenty C? It's a very popular. Does a pretty good job, but it gets funky with auto white balance sometimes. It does some weird things, and so I have to always tweak mm -hmm. it and wrangle that in um but let me let me set something up here i i'm i messed something up and i need a i need a cue i need to get something going again real quick so bear with me i'm going to set up mm -hmm. um this was something new i just did right before the stream but um i've not tried the google meet and something messed up i had to restart my setup um so let me do this real quick yeah So I want to ask you a question, question real quick. A couple of weeks ago, you were talking to a guy I had not seen you interview before. Um, he was talking about a different type of, not smelting, but manufacturing oh, yeah. with metal. Yeah, damn. What was that all about? What, what was that? How did that work? What was that process? Uh, I was really intrigued, but I never heard of that before. He was doing microwaves at first, or I guess he was oh, doing yeah, microwave yeah, stuff. Yeah. But then, he um, says but he was that he about, can pretty much reliably melt aluminum and not aluminum but actually zinc aluminum alloy an alloy so zn l okay. is much lower temperature melting than aluminum but actually stronger than aluminum so it's it's just one of those perfect things wow. that just work and he says he's doing that reliably in a microwave oven which is like wow, wow. okay let's try that yeah now the other thing and that, that was like the other thing that's for me that's very exciting is we cover we, we began talking about this concept of MIG what I call MIG casting and for some reason I've never seen this anywhere but it's an obvious thing. Wait, uh, power. I'm off grid here. I gotta switch to power. Hold on. Oh. The way he goes. Oh, it's beeping. <laughs> it's beeping. You like that? Uh, Little CD home activity yeah. right here. Nice. Um. But uh. So, so it's one of those things like with technological determinism where you, it's like, it's so canned, it's so uncreative and you're stuck with all these options that just exist. Like the zinc aluminum alloy is one of those things that I think could have much more potential, but nobody like does it. Another one of those things is MIG casting. So what I'm saying is take a MIG welder and have a cast form. Are you, can you still hear me? Oh. Yep. I was in a little lag, but yeah, it was okay. kind of stuttering. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shoot. Um, Sorry. Make a form out of uh, I just crashed sorry okay so if you make a form out of uh, can you still hear it? yeah I can hear you oh, okay. can you hear me you're still there Hopefully okay, it's yeah. still no make a form out of uh, some refractory material and then simply take a MIG welder and weld into it so if the geometry of the form is complex like say you 3d printed it and made it around a 3d printed shape then you can have immediate access to pretty much MIG casting off a MIG welder for complex shapes. So full full metal casts using a MIG welder. And I was trying to look all over the internet for this. I've never seen it. I, I'm sure it's doable. I'm sure there's some challenges, but uh, that's just one of those low-hanging fruit-looking things mm -hmm. that for some reason I've never... I, I could not find on the internet, and I, th I think it's... It's going to be another one of those things which is like, wow, this thing just works. So that's uh -huh. been my experience a lot of times that a lot of things do work if you kind of understand a little bit about them. Yeah. Sorry, are you guys getting like weird? Am I, hang on. What, I'm trying to figure out what crashed on me. Yeah. Okay. I just Where see you your blue are? screen there. I don't see. Uh, 
Oh, weird. That's that's funky. I'm trying to how to find how to how do I do in in Google Hangouts? How do I to put put two of you guys next to each other? Because right now you're stacked one on top of each other. Uh, uh, I had to close that sidebar, and that did it. Um, well, I'm getting some funky stuff. Something. Me oh, here. This I is good practice before. for me because I try to learn to roll. Oh, there it is. Weird. Full screen. Oh, okay, you guys are next to each other. Um, okay, there's that. So you're doing OBS, and basically OBS allows you to set up set up a back screen to what you present. Right, so you can do compositing. So I'm doing green screen compositing. So right now I'm compositing over just a still image I made uh, that was made in Blender. Um, I'm okay. trying to get... I had a really cool... Yeah, chroma key. I'm just using chroma key filter built in. Um, I'm trying to do a window... Let's see, window capture. I've got an IRC channel running. Um... I'm trying to get that back up. I had it set up. For the I'm green screen sure. part, did you actually have it's to have a green right. screen, or can you do this Cor without? Yeah, it? I mean, you could use you could use any color you wanted to, right? It doesn't have to be, be green per se. Um, you just can't have everything green if you do that. Um, it needs to give you enough separation. In yeah, as long as, long as you're blue, separating. But it depends what you want to wear and stuff like that. Yeah, farthest away from your skin tone mm -hmm. works best on that. Man, I um. Man, it has to be uniform. I had this uniform. Uh, yeah, so it's stretched. I have a pretty, I have a pretty big stretched it top, top. Show um, me without it. Show me without the. Uh, okay, hang on. Image. I don't know. Let's see. This is probably yeah, gonna. Yeah. Well, okay. There's. You can barely so see over here. So you well, yeah. Black. That's it's it's composite. Let me see if I can pause this real quick. Uh, where's my feed? Can I just do maybe this is good, like I said, because I, I needed a lot of practice with like all the randomness I was about to show showcase. Yeah. Um, okay, there you so go. Can you see it? Green screen. Yeah. Oh yeah, so it's yeah. kind of like not even neatly arranged. Like there's that stuff in the corner yeah. which that's, wasn't even showing. I don't know if that was cropped out or if I yeah. Maybe, uh, that's why the window's a little cropped. I think I. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can set up so many filters, just like Photoshop or you know GIMP, adding your layers. You can set up those filters. Um, so in this case, I cropped myself down a little bit, cropped that stuff out. And my whole desk, I can just move my whole. This is the way I've got this stuff set up. But yeah, those are just kind of bad creases. You'll see those in the feed. Um, and I have a color correction on there too. Like that's really, I'm really kind of washed out there. So then there's adding some saturation back. I probably should add a little bit more saturation. There we go. Yeah, now I got a tan, right? I don't. I never get to see the sun, and then now I go into Trump territory. <laughs> little orange, uh, and that's you can see the. That's the one thing about this camera. It does, you know, with with the chroma keying, the way it does it, as fast as it does it, it's got some weird. You got to tweak it and dial it in. And like I say, my light setup changes all the time. So yeah, now now you can see a weird chroma keying here. It just no matter what my settings are, even though I try to reduplicate my settings every time, the d t different time of day, I've got even though I have a LED lights up here and I got a different light over there, it's um, mm -hmm. it changes. So I've get, you know, they, I don't know, I have to reset this all the time. Um, but what I was really excited to show you was this IRC feed, but um, that's what messed up somehow. This for whatever reason, uh, it won't grab my other Firefox window here. And this is the first time I try to do it this way. I don't. I I go by what um, Pablo Vasquez uh, from the Blender Foundation. He does his new. You know, they do the weekly kind of mm. Blender today hour long distro, and he's got a great setup the way he does his uh, production. I kind of try to mirror that, but I'm not exactly sure. They use like YouTube streaming, and then they have the YouTube chat window, and they that's what they pipes in. Um, but let me tr give this one more try and see if I can get this. Okay, that it it looks right here, but when I I'm going to say, okay, I wonder if it's the filter doing it. Oh, that doesn't look good. Oh, jeez. Uh, all right, let me, last, last time, let me try this. Okay, let me try a different way this time. Something I was doing was crashing this window, I guess. Um, so what I'm doing in OBS, I'm, I'm going like I'm cropping. Y'all can't see it yet, but... Um, I'm just changing the cropping value. So I basically have a w web page, and I told it to do a window, um, a window cast, a window. Uh, what's it called? Web web capture, window capture. 
Um, so I'm cropping from the left and the right. Let's see, 250. Okay, that looks fine. Oh, come back from the top about 50. Yep, let's go 75. Okay, I'm going to go with that and close. All right, so now let me show you this, and maybe this will make a little sense. I don't know, some sense. Let's see. And I'm going to move this, change in the stacking order so that uh, that looks bad. But okay, here we go. Boom. There we are. Oh. Okay, so now don't look at the bad chroma keying right now on the green screen. But what I was trying to get set up was this is this is just a uh, that's an IRC. I'm using uh, Kiwi IRC. So KiwiIRC.com is a web web page IRC client. Logged in, and you can see right now that's the real time. That's live. People are chatting right now. Um, that's the Linux website on Freenode. Um, and if I navigate back over here, and I can switch it to, there's open source ecology. Uh, on, on there's only se seven people. Yeah, only seven people are on. But, um, but yeah, so, so if I type now and you should be able to see that. Yeah. So all I did there was I put myself on top of this. Um, it's just a web page and I just kind of played with it already. So I kind of knew the numbers I was shooting for. So I just cropped over a little bit so you don't see all the channel names. And then I cropped over a little bit more so you don't see all the people who are logged in the chat room. And I got it to where it's just the feed itself. And that's what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. um, and I can go to where well, there's Linux. There's there's uh, the physics channel. I got Linux CNC. So normally they're kind of active. Um, but anyway, so yeah, the point is, you can pull up, you can plug in, pipe in anything that's web based. You can just pull it in as a web page, and if you crop it just right, this might not be ideal because again, depending, I have to make sure this website web page is exactly the set width I want it. Um, so there's um, so maybe some weird ca caveats go back here. To the, go back to the IRC. Did, did my thing show up on your screen there? Oh, let me see. Okay. Oh, there you are. Oh, man, look at that. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Cool. Uh, uh, so that's a way to kind of get the dialogue going. Of course, depending on how you set that up, too, you could have it. Maybe you don't want to be blocking the people's, and it will just scroll up as more people type. Um, but so, you know, that's another scene. So you set up your scenes, and I'd be able to switch between um, my scenes on the fly. So you could kind of switch... Now I want to talk about this, right? So come back to your audience, right? It's just me and the audience talking. Now you're like, all right, let's go back to, let's see if there's any questions from the audience. So you switch back and you say, I want to take this camera. Now we're back here. Oh, there's some new new stuff going. Of course, you might have to moderate it. Might you have some spammers. Maybe you have some naughty naughty things being talked about and you got to moderate that, whatever. You know, that's, that's the other caveat with the people who get famous and popular and they have to have somebody moderate this stuff um so that's probably the disadvantage of using a public forum or public chat like irc mm -hmm. um i showed you the my paint stuff too i don't know if i've got that yeah i've got i've got it set up so i don't have the tablet set up so on this one i just dropped that uh logo also on the on the side down there um and it's not full screen yet but um so i can just tab that i think uh oops uh, nope, nope. Uh, this keystroke only works sometimes. Tab key. Hmm. Oh, you got to be in full screen mode. Okay, so now it's full screen. I don't have my drawing tablet set up, but I won't draw you another awesome car like I have my truck. So this is um. <laughs> a, this is a touchpad. Uh, I I don't have my Wacom tablet hooked up right now. That was just my mouse drawing. Um, but yeah, it, it could be uh, any kind of drawing tablet. I bought a what's called the XP XP Pen. It's a company that puts out Wacom alter alternatives, and they um, it was like thirty bucks, and that's why I was like, I'll take a chance on it. Um, it doesn't have Linux drivers. Adam tried to help me get something set up. I think when I was on Kubuntu, but now I went back to Ubuntu, um, and it worked. Like the pressure sensitivity of drawing, it did work. But it's a really small tablet. I don't think I've got it over here. Um, it's a really small tablet, so it's really compact, tiny, thin, thin. So it's great for laptop bag. But it's um, the only thing that didn't work is I couldn't get to to do the Wacom settings where you do pre um, pressure sensitive work. It was the relative versus absolute where you are on the screen. So I don't like that because I like to keep my hand steady. I don't like to move my hand all over the place. Um, so absolute means you have to go to the top right corner is always the top right corner. Bottom left corner is always the bottom left corner, and that. You know, you had to move your pin all the way over there. Even though the screen's way over here, you're looking over here. You had to move all the way over here. 
kind of weird stuff. So I like to set the Wacom settings in Ubuntu work really well uh, with a Wacom tablet, and then that's where you set up relative versus offset, and, and that works well. So anyway, 30 bucks. I tried it. It does work. Um, people who maybe aren't used to any of this stuff would like it, and it worked fine for them. But I was just looking for an alternative, cheaper, portable solution. Any drawing tablet. Um, I did have a Chromebook that had a drawing tablet, and that actually worked because I had um, uh, Gallium OS on it. Really cool platform. Something cr got corrupted in it and it totally destroyed the whole thing, but it was flipped so you could actually flip it. It had two cameras on there, so I was able to do OBS with it and have two cameras set up and a drawing to go in. That was a really cool proof of concept. Um, I was hoping you'd be able to use that in education for teachers and stuff. Be, it would have been a great Linux-based, Chromium-based, um, Linux-based platform. But anyway, um, so there there was... Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to try to throw this all out as I go. Um, so we saw the chat room up there, and again, I can just switch to any IRC channel, so that's any live feed. Um, I showed you Pure Ref. It's a cool what it is. I, I was hoping there'd be maybe an open source solution to that, but it's, it's cool what it is. They do freeware, so you can just pay if you like it, um, support them, but it's a Java application, I think. You can just put your images anywhere, zoom in, zoom out, rotate, move, or group, move around. Um, so I think it's a really great pace board uh, when you're learning, when you're trying to talk to something. You're really good, and I love watching you work because you're you're all over the place like I am, but you can you can actually spell and type fast. So <laughs> you can uh, watching you do your uh, wiki editing. I don't know how many people appreciate do, what you do with that. Mm. But the, you know, as you're interviewing somebody, um, I think that's really cool how you're you change on the fly and move, modify, and um, edit all that stuff content yeah. as you go. It's pretty awesome. Um, I'm actually trying to find. I can't even see. It. The feed now. No, nobody appreciates oh, that. No. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> You're the first person. <laughs> Man, I, well, again, since I did, uh, since I did this kind of stuff, as far as um, you know, faculty development and looking yeah, yeah. at how teachers teach and how you learn and you know, whatever people concept stuff. Um, I think is there one more scene I've got, and I think that was probably it. Um, and I just go back to the wall itself. Oh no, I do. I did set up this. Here you go. I set up Blender, right? So I set up Blender for you this time. Um, so now I've got. My, myself chrome key move myself over because in blender everything takes place over there uh -huh. um but this is the scene i was playing with that i did the background i've got a couple other backgrounds that probably look a little better but i like the glow on that one now i yeah. yeah i suck at blender i've used blender for years and i still suck at it um it's, it's such a complex you know to get all the the correct lighting and stuff i was trying to do and i don't know it was it might my, my uh this is a different scene than what you see in yours but hmm. um Anyway, I was just playing with it, um, doing different, I don't know, just different ideas. Um, I don't know if I've got Inkscape. we got Inkscape. Where's Inkscape? Um, Have you ever used Inkscape, the, the plugin for G-Code? I have not. Um, well, maybe once I did that. Uh, I don't know if Adam has. He's he's more savvy on some of that than I am. Um, Adam, have you I, done I've that? I've got a tagline down there, but... You're muted. Muted. Uh, yeah. yeah the, your vinyl cutter, was that G-code or was it, that Yeah, yeah. Driver. No, yeah, I had a was Silhouette 3 uh, Cameo. Is that what it, Cameo Silhouette 3. Um, it had proprietary software, of course. I wanted to use Linux, and we had to go through some hoops. There was called Ink Cut, I think. Um, it was a plug-in. Plug they made a standalone of it. And, um, yeah, so I, in Inkscape, did the design, go to, exports it to InkCut, I think, and then I, I, I think that was the last one I used was InkCut. Um, all I got, to, I did get it to work exactly like I wanted to, came out exactly like I wanted to, like, a couple times when I did one project, and then I took everything apart, and then I didn't get it back to working again, so, um, hmm. Never, so, that's G-Code, cool. yeah. Never heard of InkCut because there's a uh, G code tools. I never heard of InkCut. It says for plotters mm -hmm. too. InkCut is more um, probably user friendly than some of those other tools. It, and mm -hmm. I needed something GUI, right? Because I'm not a programmer. I don't know how to do that kind of stuff on the back end. Um, mm -hmm. But so that's why I try to use something as functional as possible. They they had a, a different. It was some kind of maybe old old version of it, and they kind of revamped it. And I kind of hit and miss with some older stuff versus newer stuff. Mm -hmm. I kept running into issues like that. This is bothering me, so I'm going to try to fix this real quick. But other than that, I don't think we've got anything that will drive directly from it. 
Not. Um, How would you guys do drawing? Like we're still because, for example, our three D printer. I mean, we could do good plotting, but uh, we're not so great on the software side. Like drawing what? For generating like like a take any blueprints or. Well, no. Take say take any bitmap or other images from the internet and just draw them out on a plotter, like pictures. You know, like maybe like point to list pictures, line pictures, anything. Just basically having full control over the ability to plot things on a little plotter. So it could be lettering, it could be images, it could be like shaded. Um, it works well, like like um, in terms of the control with the CNC plotter. Yeah, I mean you have full control, but it's like how do you now add the finesse to actually make useful things with, like say, do a birthday card or whatever. So I mean, are you are you saying like still take like export from uh, Inkscape and go straight to a plotter, or are you talking about like you know pushing X Y X Y X Y and actually making it draw manually with no no not knobs. manually from no no from pictures it generates the G code from that from a picture you're converting it so there's G code tools it converts your, your yeah I've not tried that too. from in the raw as far as the raw goes I mean Adam would have more insight I think I think the other things I've done is using GIMP or Inkscape to create that black and white or that etching image or the path the path tools um, within the vector that I can get it to that stage and I can go learn our our crappy laser software it's horrible um, and that's as far as I've gone with that I've not done any other G code stuff specifically I uh, Adam I don't know have you I haven't really tried it but it does do bitmaps right you can basically just give the rabbit software a bitmap and it will um, right yeah it takes that black and white and... Then. it doesn't really I've never worked with a platter it's more like using a using an inkjet printer or something at that point because it just rasters across the image oh uh, what's the software you mentioned it's the rabbit laser it's the Chinese this software that came with our our laser right and it isn't kind of it's terrible it's horrible yeah mm -hmm. I think there's an upgrade but we don't have the upgrade so we're on a very old version which is it it does not work like any software is supposed to work uh, yeah that one's bad Um, our new, our new used uh, CNC we got, I think it uses the what Linux CNC um, yeah, it used, software. Uses command it's a CNC technically. Command CNC. It's, a, it's um, their kind of slightly modified fork for. Yeah, kind of still proprietary. So I, I mean, I assume it's mm. all got to be free because Linux CNC is GPL. I don't know. Mm -hmm. They've what? done something to tweak it and released it as their own distro for it anyway. Yeah. I haven't really looked into it too hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me neither. Let's see. Those guys are... I chatted with... They. I think the guy did a... Um, what, what was the one, Adam, on... Was it Hackaday? I think yeah. the guys from Linux CNC were chatting, and I, I got some good inf insight, and then I came back to this chat room, and he was like, oh, you must be that guy. Like, I was the only person that was as clueless as I was. And I was like, I don't know anything about this. I'm just asking questions. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they got a kick that I was that, that much of a newbie. Yeah. Um, it's an interesting uh, IRC channel they've got there. Oh, that one? I didn't even look at it. Pretty random. There's lots of like... Oh, right, right. Yeah, they say they're off topic. Talk yeah, they're <laughs> off topic all the time. Mm -hmm. Let's go to this. So take a look at this doc. Let's actually document some of this here. So... Go into the chat and come um, back here. I've got find and edit, okay. so you should be able to edit this doc okay. podcast studio. Let's talk about let's do that live and cue that up now so. Just up to so you, you use OBS Studio for recording. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see you if I can switch this screen. to... So you're, you're doing a green screen live right now as, you, as you're speaking, right? So that's set up. Correct. It's part of the setup. That's a and function. Sure. How, how do you extract that that's within OBS Studio? You, you minus the subtract the green screen? Yeah, that's just a composite, just a chroma keying composite. So you're using OBS, you add a filter. Um, uh, 
using OBS in, in broadcasting mode or recording mode broadcasting, right? Or uh, Neither. Um, what's cool is, and Adam will have to give the detail on this if you can, um, this is it's a new plugin. You have to use Ubuntu, what, 20.04 or higher. It's, a, it's part of the kernel that does this, allows for this um, virtual cam software. For, so you have to have this virtual cam turned on and again Adam go for the details but you have to have that turned on first in order for it to um, for for any device to see it as a webcam device that's why I can pipe this into anything be it zoom be it go to meeting be it Google whatever um, Microsoft teams I can I can do whatever I want to do just like a video broadcast um, you know like a tricast or some big high-end tricaster production with multiple video inputs multiple setups um, I can use OBS for that and push it to any kind of webcam feed I want um, so Adam if you want to get a little background on that I'd appreciate that um, however it's set up I don't know how the technical terms or whatever maybe he's mute you muted oh there we switched back keep the end Right, yeah, so um, it's the OBS V4L2 sync. Um, yeah, I'll you can type it, type it in there. My, uh, oh, yeah, so he, he uh, helped me set up some instructions for it. Unfortunately, it requires an out of tree kernel module. Oh, what? But it, it, it ties in with the whole video for Linux uh, webcam stuff. But there's this um, out tree module called V4L2 loopback. Um, and to get the to get a new enough version, that's why you need Ubuntu 2004. It, it exists in 1804, but it's um, it's too old to work with the with the V4L2 sync in OBS. So, but it is—it's a DKMS package, so it builds the um, the kernel module, module, but it does it for you on the fly. So. Um, if we're going to Linux Mint and OS e Linux, would Mint handle it too, or no? That's not in there. I, I think so. If, if you're using the latest Linux, right? Because based yeah. on the kernel, is that correct? Usually, Mint's following at least the the latest stable, right? So they should be on 2004 by now. So it should have a new enough kernel. Mm -hmm. In a pinch, you can build it from source yourself, but if you want the, the easy way around, then um, yeah, if you're on 2004 base, then you'll be okay. Hmm. Okay. Um, and this is documented on the OBS site as well. Um, but yeah, send a link to that one. When I when I get Adam, what Adam helps me out is. Um, he helps write it in terms I can understand quickly in my environment, which I try to make as generic as possible, right? So everything I do, I try to make it as generic and as stock as possible. I try not to use a lot of random party, third-party plugins and those kind of things. Um, but yeah, it's it's just the OBS uh, V4. Um, at the, they have it for Windows too, so I've been using it on the work computer with Windows. Um, so Windows 10 and um, the plugin, I think they call it, it they're, they're different names. So on Windows, it's called like OBS Virtual Cam, I think. But then this one, I think it calls it V4L2 Sync or um, something, yeah. something like that. It's it, it's based, it's, um, yeah, I put it in that snippet anyway. You can um, see what it's called there. There's also the link to the GitHub page for the, the, the OBS. So there's plugin. the. There's the GitLab, so that's the plugin. So I just install that package, and then uh, it's a snippet, so it's, it's the instructions to walk through. But yeah, you install yeah, that, and then the, you have to do. Link in there Go ahead. That, that sends you to the builds. Um, so yeah, if you get the, that tells you how to build it from source. I think you have to do that, but it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, it looks like they've got a release. It's quite old. I think that's why I built it. You'd have to. Can you get some pretty specific instructions on how to do that? Uh, I mean, if you, you follow that um, so link, then it's it kind of you, pretty much tells you step by step. I don't think I could. So install. Explain it any better. So install that. You'll need Git, of course. Um.
hopefully this will get easier soon. Um, so yeah. Uh, I'm not on 2004 at the minute. Yeah, Can nice you see what's available there, Beck? I don't know Say if they've added Adam? this. I was just wondering uh, if they've added this plugin upstream are you, at all yet. Yeah. Where, where are you looking at? Am I looking at a different screen? I don't see where you're... Are you all chatting somewhere, or are you putting... Um, I dropped my snippet into the, um, the dot. Did you see the dot that was posted in the chat? Chat. Click on the chat box. I thought... Um, in the Google, win Google Hangouts. So it takes you to a, an editable doc. I'm on the... Yeah, I'm on the doc. Mm -hmm. I can see the doc. And I yeah. see Adam's... I mean, I see the podcast studio. Am I looking wrong yeah. place? Yeah, yeah. So there's this... Just taking notes there. I think the link, link to the GitLab link is what you're looking for. Right. I had that pulled up. I was streaming that, actually. And Adam, are you talking about in that, the snippet? Um, about what? Oh, you were asking if I... Asked. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Um, I just thought if you... Can you check if um, they've added this plug-in to 2004. I'm on, only on 18.04 at the minute, so I don't know if they've added anything that might make it easier to install than having to go oh, and buy it. Uh, so give me the instructions on how to do that. What's the best way to find that out? Like, app search, OBS, OBS, something like that, see if you mm. your plugins. Where are you running OBS Studio from? This is uh, from Ubuntu 2004. Um, I've been having that weird the, thing where I, I can't search for... From the Ubuntu mm. packages or from something else? Have you, have you added a PPA or something? Oh, um, probably a PPA. Let me give me a second. So, and um, so if I got OBS under tools, another one would appear the V4 L2 sync. Like that would appear as an option, or um. Yeah. So, tools, it, right? yeah, it's it's probably like a three stage thing. You got to download that and run the whatever Adam said, um, compile it. I guess. Yeah. Uh, you have to download the plugin, compile it, and then it's in your tools. So in OBS, you go to your tools and you say um, V4 L2 video output, and that would appear as another. It, that would appear as another option a, in tools. Right, it's a little, it's a little plug-in, little dialog box pops up and it says auto start. So you just turn on the auto start, so it's always running every time you open OBS. It'll automatically start, and then it gives a path for V2 uh, L L2 device, and that's your slash dev slash video, and it defaults to ten, I think, is what it's set up as. So video ten. Yeah, if you follow my snippet, then mm -hmm. slash dev slash video ten will be where your loopback device is. And then video format, it has a default format. And so I was just, every time I open up OBS, it's automatically running. So to start the session, I make sure OBS is open first. And in this case, I should have not had any web browsers open. Um, start OBS, make sure it's running, make sure you've got your feed, make sure your least camera's working. Um, and then you open Firefox or Chrome, Chromium, and go to your go to meeting, your web. WebEx, your Google Meet, your Jitsi, and from Jitsi, then you would pull down your drop down and say, I want this webcam because it will probably see all your webcams, but you want to make sure it's on the loopy, and thus we have it set up as the loopy um, loop back so that it sees this one. And then before we did that, Adam, the, the third step was to do the mod, what's it called? Mod prod? Mod prod. Probe. Prod? Mod, mod probe. probe. Module. Kernel module. Yeah. Suit. We had to set that and make sure that was running. If, you set if it I can do it, snippet, then it boots automatically. It, it loads automatically on boot. Yep. Oh man, your green screen's like fading out on you. So top. um, when you What's feed, that? I got to reset it. When you do that feed, so the the, the open source ecology logo on your background. Where is that coming from? Right it was now. just a, a, a just a PNG, so it's just a graphic PNG in Blender. I showed you, showed you the Blender scene I made. Um, that was done. And how do you? Uh, the so you got the video okay. feeding in uh, through the. In OBS, process. it's just a background. 
yeah, it's just a background image in OBS. So in Blender, I made it and then rendered it out mm -hmm. and then brought that into, once I rendered it, uh, then I brought that into OBS as a background image. So that's my background. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a so I, I took a, just a few notes here, but uh, so in OBS. Let me see if I can find. Uh, use. Uh, where is that in OBS? Where do I select that? I mean. Um, All right. So uh, OBS, the way to understand OBS structure is you always have a scene. So I could share my screen, but then you'd get that whole like loop back thing. Um, you always start with a scene. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven scenes. Every time you see me switch to something else, what, what you're seeing right now is scene, my scene one. I've got it named main OBS scene. Now this is my layer two, layer two scene, whatever you want to name this. I could have changed the name to chat. Uh, blender, I made the blender scene. So I have a blender scene, I switched. Now that's my blender scene. I've got just my full webcam, and this is already composited, so this is how I set up the main thing. I got a blank screen. This is just just the um, background scene. My paint. There's my my paint drawing right right now. It's my screen share. Um, so those are scenes. You start with a scene. Once you have a scene in place, then you go grab the sources. What what do you want? What sources do you want in the scene? So on mm -hmm. this scene, I've got my graphic which is the background graphic. I've got my webcam graphic and my webcam, my webcam uh -huh. is a scene, but I brought the scene in as a composited background. So I have a filter on that scene and that scene is a green screen. That's my composite. And I put them just like stacking layers, like in GIMP, right? You got layers, you're stacked them on top of each other. So in OBS, you have layers matter, which order has is, which mm -hmm. matters. So you put those, um, well here, I, let me, I can do this. This I'm will... out what profiles were for compared to scene collections as well. Your profile is Pro... basically your output oh. settings, and your scene collection is, well, your collection of scenes, which kind of made sense anyway. But it took so, me yeah, you to could figure out why there were these two different sets. Differentiate. Settings. So, that's okay, right? Y'all can see my screen halfway decent? It's all right? Yeah. Uh, mm. I wish I could select just yours. How do I do that? Maybe you double click on it, maybe? Okay, I don't have. Uh, I don't know how to zoom in by default. Tint to screen apparently means just. No, oh, I this see. <laughs> oh, there's studio mode. Let's go back. Oh, that messed all that up. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you can add sources. Okay, so here's a, like... there's a source, full webcam eyeballs. I can hit the eyeball, turn it on, turn it off, and there's the background image. And you can lock them, move them. Uh, this one's more complicated. I have the audio device in here, so if I was doing a recording, the, the recording I sent to Martin was, um, I, I had to use the webcam, I mean my audio, so I have my audio set up in all these. Uh, normally your audio would be over here, the microphone would just be one audio source and we capture audio, but I was having some issues. So I could bring an audio channel separately. Um, that's what that's, why well, that one's in there. But here's, again, here's the full webcam, and my full webcam is composited, so it's got the alpha channel, but it's on top of, you'll notice, on top of the IRC feed. And if I go in here, this property is here. Um, that says Telegram, but here's my Kiwi IRC. Oh, that's not, okay, hang on. I got a different spot. Um, it's gonna be a filter. So I have that brought in as filter. So here's the filter um, under crop and pad. I added crop and pad. Let's see, it's not showing up. I don't know why it's not showing up, but um, there's, I, I padded from the, you know, 250 yeah, yeah. pixels this way to whatever, you, you crop it out. Uh, you probably can't see. Maybe you can see if so, I do this. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So, so hold, there's so my hold on, hold on my for webcam. A sec. So as far yeah. as um, okay, this whole thing, the instruction of how to do this, so we can teach them. And the vision would be to get any of the the developers, the people who are serious about producing content with OSC, to know how to do this whole process. So how do we? How best do do we get there? Could you do something like a nice video on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did the demo, and then you. What we need is one that says, "Okay, here's how we actually did it in as much detail as possible." So it's like someone who hasn't used the software can, without mastering, just okay. Here's the steps mm -hmm. that we get to take to get there. You know, it depends on what level. You know, I went, I went all out. I wanted to make sure I was, I was doing the biggest production I could possibly do. I think for a lot of your team, um, 
it's you know, we talk about Caden Live doing some video editing stuff too, which again, after we have this video from here, we can go edit it. But I, I felt like for y'all, your engineers and people who are creating the um, the how tos, the, the here's how you build it, here's how you put it together. Um, depending on what level they want to, if they're comfortable mm-hmm. going all out, we could show, hey, you got a green screen. I was using a, a blue sheet for a while, but then my wife wanted it back on the bed. So I had to take the sheet back. So I was using a blue sheet. Uh, it worked well. It, was a re- it actually worked really well. That blue sheet worked really well. Um, but then I went and got, actually got a proper green screen. Um, so, you know, even I've used a dollar store uh, plastic, green plastic uh, vinyl um, picnic table cover. I use that. Just whatever color matches doesn't match you um in your skin tone so as long as something different in the background you can chroma key it out if you want to go that far a lot of people don't even want to be on the webcam i don't like being on the webcam but here's the webcam so if you want to be live um and to see you now from academics and for for like um like connecting with people right to have that emotional experience like now i'm looking at the webcam and you feel a, a bond a connection with me so it's like if you want me to teach you something now you can relate to me now, not just hear my voice, which I don't know what's worse, my, my voice or my, my face. Uh, so, you know, you got, you got that kind of set up, but then it depends on what you want to do, right? Do you need to switch screens? Um, I'm comfortable now. I've got some different keystrokes. I can do the whole nine yards. But worst case, if somebody just wants to screen, cord, screen record their screen, if they're just talking about maybe they're using FreeCAD and they just want to do a recording on FreeCAD, um, I still prefer OBS, even though there are a little bit one-click solutions. I think OBS, um, as far as the setup goes, there's just a few more buttons to press, and then you can still just do basic screen recording with OBS. Um, but yeah, so then whatever tier you want to do it. So worst case, bottom of the line, record your voice, record your your screen, or record your voice, record your screen, record yourself, or record yourself and then do the backgrounds and all the, the chroma key. So from, from very basic to very advanced, I think we can throw all that in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. If you, uh, if you want to do this OBS thing and you've got a specific, uh, distribution that mm-hmm. you use, oh, yeah. I could easily, uh, put together a, a package mm-hmm. for the OBS B4L2 yeah, that, sync plugin. If you that'd want be that. awesome. So that that would be awesome. To build it themselves. Okay. Well, we could include that. You said the new one's coming out, right? You have yeah, yeah. Mint so, coming out. So we need weeks, to so. talk to Ray about that and feed that to him. So let me connect you guys yeah. and do that because I want I want to see this in there. Yeah. You know, Martin, this is something. I mean, because you your PhD and your your out of space uh, science brain. You know, I I did, I've never taken a physics class, so you know I'm, I'm way at the bottom of the barrel. Um, I do the graphical stuff, um, but one one thing I have focused on is education, right? And the learnings component. What I love is with what you've got going with the open source um, ecology, you know, your own Linux distro. I've been wanting to do something like that, you know, have my own Linux distro for whatever, because it's free, it's open source. Here, take it, run it, make make what you want to. In your case, you're packaging that uh, here's how to build a civilization on a Linux distro. And mm-hmm. not only is yeah. here's tools on the instructions, right? So you, you package maybe every Linux distro and it says, uh, want to build a tractor? Here's the instructions. Want to build a 3D printer? Here's the oh, instructions. Yeah. Want to build this? And so exactly. it's already packaged with the wiki, with everything is already on that. They did what, what's called a, a internet in a box, I think they said. The, the internet box kind of went, you know, you can download the whole wiki. You can download all these things, put it on an internet package, go to a third world country and do the hole in the wall project where you just stick it out there yeah. and say, go learn something. So that scale, what I love, but what I don't see a lot of, and this is, this is where maybe we can keep morphing this into that mm-hmm. package is... Mm-hmm. Make sure not only the builders have something to build with and the programmers have something to program with, but also the learners, the teachers, the educators yeah. have something to teach with. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so you're taking you're taking the that whole ecosystem. And this is one thing I wish I, I could see more of. The there's OpenCast, which is a uh, classroom like for it's for design for universities to push um, to push like uh, recordings. Um, you know, you walk in the classroom at eight o'clock in the morning. The camera's already running. Your mm-hmm. class ends at ten o'clock. Your, you know, it stops. It already uploads it. It, it tags it for you. Uh, you can go put on the metadata. So, uh, OpenCast is great for that kind of thing. There's, um, there's an annotation annotation tool. I think it was out of France um, called Open. I've got it. Open Board. Um, so it's called Open Board. Um, it's got some cool stuff. It's like a smart board software. Uh, Got to reset my. Brightness. Um, so I'm gonna switch that back up. Maybe you can see the screen if I do this. 
don't know if y'all can see that. Um, yeah, so can y'all see that red yeah. drawing? So open board, this is designed to be a smart board brand. Smart board was a brand name, um, this but this source? is designed. Yeah, this is open source. It was from a, it's older. This is an older version. I had to get a snap to actually install this, but this is one of the things where I think uh, from academia mm. university side of things, they'll, I mean, a university backed this one too. They helped sponsor this and build this. Um, but I think some of this gets lost in commercial applications and enterprise applications versus educators and this is what i get so frustrated about taxpayers money right i don't mind spending taxpayers money i just want to go to taxpayers right i want the i want the benefit to go back to taxpayers mm -hmm. and so i i would love for money taxpayers money whatever for education goes into software like this open open board and then from there they everybody gets the benefit from it right so you you, you grab a couple of million dollars worth of taxpayers from all over the world, right? Everybody contributes yeah. this pocket of money yeah. and then they make open board really, really good. Or you put it in OBS, you put it into Blender, you put it in Inkscape, you put it into GIMP. And now educators or, or instructional designers can take that open source. They can leverage those tools and they can teach the masses yeah. and give them, give them tools to teach with, right? So it's like, help me help you. Yeah, absolutely teach the world and so that's that's kind of one thing i thought about the enterprise stuff which i don't know anything about business i've been in higher education all my life uh higher higher stuff um professional career um so i don't know about the enterprise stuff and how to work all that stuff and i know that's what your, your main focus right now is that um enterprise uh, but it's like you still need a way for open source people to help you help them help train help teach in this kind of fashion this kind of graphical thing so anyway that's again i, I, I go way on tangents and everybody loves to Point that out. My wife says I'm a chihuahua, and I go crazy uh, about open source stuff. But no, I get no, passionate about it. But yeah. When I first uh, started learning like programming, I ended up diving into Python because at school we were doing Visual Basic six, which although you can kind of get it with Windows, I guess that was still like paid for, and I couldn't use it anywhere uh, else. Mm -hmm. Like, who wants to use software tools that? require money and it's even yeah worse. a teach like, a, a kid yeah I was doing like scientific software uh, they where I used to work University of Leicester uses loads of IDL which means anything I wrote there now I can't do anything with unless I've got a few thousand dollars for a license IDL interactive data language yeah <laughs> holy yeah. cow that's what I used in my PhD <laughs> yeah well, my wife's <laughs> working on it and, like she's doing that stuff all the time I'm sorry yeah, try to use Python when it's possible, but there's lots already written in IDL. But that's crazy, you know, March. That's oh, that's another man. thing I, th I find I find so humorous. But at the same time, I think that's going to be one of your biggest hurdles. And this is one thing I kind of feel for your journey. I think you've you, you you've already seen this. You've already realized this. But it's it's that the rest of the the masses we're trying to unlock their brain. Right. This is the whole the Matrix you know thing. We're trying to unlock these people their mind of. But they're so ingrained into this open source or not. The commercial side, right? The pro the proprietary mm -hmm. software industry, and especially in the United States. I mean, it's better in other countries, and especially some third world countries got it. I mean, South America and, and Central America. Mm. Um, some people I'm working with down there, they got it. They they didn't have any money to begin with, so they just went and used open source software, and now they're they got all this innovative stuff. They're doing these innovative things. They don't know they can't afford a Microsoft license or Apple license or whatever. They definitely couldn't afford yeah. this Autodesk or whatever you're all talking about programming languages. But yet we're so ingrained, especially in the United States, we're so ingrained into this is the way it's done. You have to do this. You have to buy the software. You can't learn unless you buy our software. You can't you can't uh, make money unless you buy our software. And I think that's one of the biggest hurdles. I, I don't know how to do it. I wish I did because I'm I've been preaching this kind of stuff myself for so long now, and I don't know how to get over that hurdle. I don't. I, there's another PhD um, professor I worked with. Uh, he's really good. He 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 kind of moved over. I kind of gave him the what the red pill, the blue pill. He, you know, he he took it and he's using Linux here and there. He's not techy at all. He just he liked the idea of having a little more freedom. And he runs into these things that I can't help with it. But he doesn't research a lot. He doesn't know exactly where he's going with it. But he he understood it. But he didn't know he pointed out to me you know hey you gotta you're not you're not teaching this very well you don't you're not getting your point across you know don't just say it's free right because i don't think it's just saying free is is enough but at the same time if people don't know about the passion right that the, the passion is one thing right they see your passion okay great this this guy's really passionate about it but 
I don't want to go build my own tractor. I got to sit out there with welder and I got to, you know, drill this hole. And I, I don't want to build my own house. I got to make those bricks. I got to compress all those bricks and then put them together. I want to pay somebody to do it. Okay, where are you going to get the money to pay somebody, right? You got to go work for the man. You got to go work for somebody else. You know, so, I mean, it's this weird, it's this weird um, ecosystem. And I'm trying to figure out myself how this plays into the people. Maybe we're too far gone. I don't know. I don't want to think that. But, I mean, maybe we're too far gone, especially now in our day in society. But this planet we live on, how do you get people who are so conditioned to be like, I'll go down the street and pick up one to buy. It'll be in a throwaway container. Throw it away with a piece of plastic. And it precious plastic. I love what your, your, your conversation with David you know, he didn't even know what the word open source meant. And, and you're like, no, you need to, this was like a couple of years ago, I think. You're like, no, you need to put an open source license to this. And he's like, I don't care. Just give it away free. No, 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 no. Make sure you license this and put it in an open source license. And, <laughs> you know, I, I love that talk. It was a good talk. Um, but again, that's another person. He had a passion. He was going in a direction, but he didn't know what to do with it. I don't know how we get the masses. I don't know how we how we address well, that. I think um, the, the good news is like what Bl Blender and Linux have already shown, and is that it only takes a small amount of money to do it. You say, okay, just put in um, a million to it here and there, and then you get these things that are better than everything mm -hmm. else. That, that's all it is. I, you heard the concept of the open source trap. How did you see, hear that? Hear me say that? I mentioned that mm -hmm. in referring to how many different open source CNC routers have been produced out there. Thousands. Then mm -hmm. the next yeah. person comes along. Uh, doesn't do it because they don't recognize how difficult it is or they don't look at other people's stuff and then collectively you spend billions well why not mm. just like collect like a million up front from all these guys and have the best best router in the world and be done with it that's what companies right do, you know so it's not well, it's, it's not, not a, it's not a intractable problem it, it com it's completely tractable but do you think it's it's like i, I see that in education too i mean with, with we were even siloed in our university it was like silos on silos it's like we went and bought this software. We went and bought this software. We didn't bought this software. It's like, wh why don't you all talk to each other? Why don't you all come together? Why did you put all that money into hiring a developer to release the source yeah, code yeah, as yeah. open source, right? Well, Just that, even that mindset, that's why I did the open source mindset. But how do you, how do you see that? Um, how do you wrangle those people if they don't know it exists? Because they're inundated with commercial, corporate, enterprise. Here's, here's you know, you've got, got to buy our product, buy our product, buy our product, buy our product. And they're tunnel vision. They don't see anything else out there. Uh, well, how do you, how do you see simply next, that? not this summer, but next summer in August 2021, we show a case where you do exactly that. So that's that's the call for the massive 2,000 person sprint where we're going to organize that like crazy. But then you have to show that, okay, you can actually get to the finish line of a product. And that's that's kind of the, the big, I think you've heard me if you follow some of the latest talks. Uh, talk a little bit about this, but I think that's all it is. It's you have to show a case where okay Here's a clear case. We've done it. We put a bunch of resources into making that happen But we have to take it a, a certain put it enough resource into it and take it to the finish line So the key is okay. How do we create? Events or processes that do that and Linux and blender have shown it. It's 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 gonna be shown in other cases where we just really suck at collaboration so the collaborative literacy is the thing that I'm talking a lot about lately saying that that everyone asks me like what's the missing link here it's collaborative literacy it's our minds it's mm. not anything about access to technology or tools that enable us to do that it's the software in our head that uh, why we can't get mm. out of the scarcity trap yeah, yeah so I, that's, I think that's going back to like Pablo like Pablo Vasquez with uh, the Blender Foundation he, his I don't know if you know his story but he um, I think it was like 15 13 14 he was in the very south tip of south america um and he had access to an old computer and he got you know linux and he put linux on there he wanted to do some graphics stuff he's a really talented graphics guy oh he found blender open source platform and he just kind of boom and thrived with it and you know as a young guy he just started doing graphics and he got passionate about it now he's doing the blender Foundation. he's at the blender foundation and i love telling his story and i love i love watching their stuff but um i think they did such a great job of building community um but I don't know. Maybe it's just the art people are more graphically. You know, they they have. I don't know. If they're different neurons that fire for them. They get excited about the graphics and they, oh, what can I make? What can I build out of this with the graphics? Um, but the way they're doing their stuff weekly and they have all this driving. I think Microsoft just this week. I think just joined their foundation, the Blender Foundation. So, you know, Microsoft. Uh, yeah, crazy. I agree. There, there are a lot of cases where everybody wants to start their own thing, but. Um, I think Linux is one where that's like hard engineering, but really, what's its 
that there's a few BSDs, but on the other hand, there's a few BSDs, and they're still way behind the the, uh, the kind of mind share of Linux. What else? Right. There? There's like Redox that are kind of working on a kernel in Rust, but that's tiny. There's a handful of other open source ones, but really, if you go an open source kernel, it's it's Linux. But do you think it's like the right people, the right time, finding the right product to do the right thing? that sparks that next revolution like so the next like, linux the next blender the next yeah there wasn't really open source linux ecology because like linus started it because he didn't really have anything good to run on his right on his ibm pc yeah what did he say it's just a and project he, a hobby i'm going to do so here yeah. here's the source code if you want it and then not only did he stand it up like once he got to a thing where he could boot something he then went ahead and went here it is mm -hmm. of course he also had the the whole gnu thing ready to go there all right they were dicking around with her like they still are which is going nowhere <laughs> but you know he got like Bl blender was well, a commercial yeah. Bl yeah, blender with ton you know it was a commercial piece of platform i guess the company went under and he asked can i take the source code and so he saw the vision there i mean is it a visionary that's got to see well, something and uh, move forward i mean look at the both for Linux and anything else like Blender, you have to have the financial feedback loops kick in. Like people have to be doing that for a living. And that's what happened with Linux. He was very deliberate. I actually looked at this lately. It was very deliberate about getting to a product that's usable pretty quickly because then you can start generating revenue and making livelihoods from it. And that's with OSC, mm. that's kind of the that, why you right. hear me talking a lot about, a, about enterprise is that yeah. people got to be making a living with this. That's, that's and your direction was the 3D printer, do the 3D printer so they can build the products, then they could go sell the products, and that was the the business yeah. model there? Yeah, I mean, we've been doing uh, workshops, the Extreme Build workshops, and now it's getting into product sales. But, yeah, it's whatever is the easiest, lowest hanging fruit. The 3D printer is a good one and that, because that lets you build the other things like the CNC torch table, or then you can make tractor parts, tractor tracks, actual housing mm -hmm. panels for the houses. So it's a very good, good starting point. Um, but yeah, it's about it is about getting a clear case for enterprise, and not only that, but also sharing that so others can replicate it. So, so in this, in the hardware system, you have to be very deliberate about the enterprise aspect. Much, I think, much more than than software, because out of software, it pretty much comes right out. Okay, you get hired or whatever. You, I think, the business case may be a little simpler in terms of how you can make money. For hardware, it's, I think it's also more complicated because you're moving all atoms around and it's logistics mm. and personnel and, and HR and is, all that. Is that it's just... Software. Say it again? Yeah, yeah. Software software doesn't cost like um, hosted or whatever. It's like that. Like you, you need the They're room, you need cost. the physical real costs. So physical actually, stuff. like my assessment of it, I used to think that, oh, it's yeah, it's much harder than uh, than software, but... My recent yeah. assessment of it, it's not like 10 or 100, it's about 1,000. It's at least 1,000 times harder. It's it's mm. much more involved. That's, I mean, so so because you're dealing with the tangible stuff, and I think David uh, with uh, Precious Plastics, I think he really had it. Is it Dave? David? Dave, Dave yeah. Uh, Dave. Um, he, he's got it going on with the, he saw the need in a piece of plastic, and can I make, can I do anything with this piece of garbage? Yeah. Um, and they, I think they've got a good thing going on with, with that model. Um, but now you're talking about like tractors. Like, so when you think about how many people need a tractor, maybe maybe that's like the hardware versus, but maybe the open source car is better. You can more people need cars than tractors. But then, like you said, you wanted to go. I got to eat, right? So how are you gonna make your own food? Maybe an aquaponics setup or some kind of uh, grow your own. I don't know. What, what's well, the so mealworms so or something? <laughs> because of where we got with the seed eco home part, yeah, we're gonna do the house as a big the big experiment for the big product release because we are not gonna have a problem having people show up. We know people want this. So mm. that's a good start. So we'll just see what happens. But yeah. Is, is the, 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 um, the uh, kind of ahead, DRM uh, and lock-in is far worse for agriculture at the minute than cars mm. as well. Usually, in most cases, not all, there are a few. Renault had a, have an electric car that you have to rent the batteries, I believe. But <laughs> in general, you buy your car and you can run it as yeah. you wish. But not, like John not John Deere. Yeah, yeah lockout, and then it's just a lack of lifetime design because then we open up the lifetime design issue with open hardware that you can maintain for as long as you like, not not the company. 
and marching uh, along the lines of the house um because again that's something people need right the shelter uh mm -hmm. that's that's a good one um did y'all go through any design sprints or or um did you talk to any other uh industrial engineers or whatever on um like why did y'all pick that design for the house with the was it with compressed bricks or did you ever look at like a geodesic dome is that a, was the geodesic um, be a smaller easier material to work well, with right now or right now hemp creed or hemp some, something like with hemp or you know, him no, right now it's like so. There's the brick press, but the other part is just simple panelized uh, construction with lumber. I mean, that's where we're mm. going right now with the house. So it's super simple, accessible everywhere. So that is something that is low hanging fruit, as opposed to the block. I mean, that's much more complicated. So we're just going with a very right, simple, okay. simple thing okay. right now, uh, and see if we can do the product release with that. So I mean, right now the idea is thousand square foot house. You can build with a friend in a week. And it costs fifty thousand dollars. So that's yeah. that's where we're getting to. So I think we can do it. We'll see. But yeah, very nice. Hey, but I got to get going though. Um, sure, here. appreciate it. Um, however, you want to use this video, or um, yeah. if we want to schedule something Publish to it. do some kind of live stream, we can walk through people. Maybe walk through this. Um, in a, in a live setting, if we had people join in and ask questions, or if you, like I said, even with this Linux Mint, maybe we, maybe we wait for that yeah, Linux Mint um, distro. Yeah, actually, let's wait. And, and let's do package that. Package it all together. Let's do that. So I'll, I'll uh, Adam, I want to connect you to Ray and you guys uh, get Ray on in this show. But yeah, let's definitely get that into the next Linux dist distribution so we can do the better quality uh, okay. podcasting. And, and, and like I said, maybe I don't know if Open Board would be the best one, but I think some other kind of annotation tool. And just to put some mm -hmm. of those tools in there, because what I always told about faculty, and they're like, "Well, I can't teach this. I don't want to do this." Like, what's the worst going to happen? They're going to learn something, right? Students are going to learn something. We put the software. Let me give them open source software. Rocket science, yeah. There's some rocket science. There's electrical engineering software packages. You, what's the worst yeah. thing to do? Right? They're going to they're learn something. Yeah. So, so it, with this OBS build, maybe we can add some of those tools yeah, into yeah. it as well. Let's do that. Let's. Uh, so cool. I'll, I'll uh, touch with you and. Get everybody connected on cool. that, so I'll follow up with that. Right. That's awesome. Great. Okay, guys. Thank you very much, man. Well, thanks a lot. We'll talk to you soon. Have fun. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.